Um, hello again. I think I might have been talking to myself for the last eight minutes, nine minutes. My children just messaged me on WhatsApp to say, we can't see you, mum. And I realised I had it set to uh, to private, so only I could see it. <sighs> you see, this is, this is me. <laughs> These are the problems I have. <laughs> I've practised so many times with the only me setting on it. And then I'd set it up. I thought I'd set it up so everyone could see it, but apparently not. I'd made a complete mess of that. So, right, I'll start again from the beginning. Just pretend you're just joining me for this, this video, please. OK. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining me for the official launch of my new novel, This Year Maybe. Hang on, let me just check that it's actually on live now. Oh, good. Yes. OK. So this is my um, novel this year, maybe. You see, it has a grey streak around it. That isn't on the actual copies. That's just because it's a proof copy and um, I haven't been organised enough to order any proper copies. Let me have another quick check. So hopefully you're seeing this now. Let me see what's going on. Um, really hope you're seeing this now. OK, I'll assume you are. So <laughs> I'm really sorry about this. This year, maybe, is a sequel to my first novel, um, this time next year. If you've read that, you'll recognise lots of the characters who appear in This Year Maybe. And if you haven't read it, it doesn't matter uh, because this is a standalone book. Although if you like, if you'd like to read This Year Maybe first, you can get it as a free download if you go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. I'll put all the links in the comments uh, section afterwards, or I'll try to. <laughs> I really hope that works better. So the main characters are Alison and David. They're engaged. They're in their 50s. They've been living together for some time. And the novel starts on the 1st of January. When. Um, oh, good. I just saw that Anne has clicked on to say that she's seeing it now. Excellent. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yes, on the 1st of January, David suggests that this could be the year that they actually get married. When um, they tell Alison's parents, family, that they're getting married, and a few days later, Alison gets a phone call from her mother. Um, I'm going to read a few short extracts. At home that evening, the phone rang. Colby City was about to start on television, but seeing it was mum, I picked up the phone while I tried to find the pause button. Hello, Mum. Hello, Alison. It's your mother here. Yes, Mum, I know. You and Dad OK? Yes, fine. Well, your dad is grumbling about putting his back out today, but it's his own fault. He will go trying to lift things. Oh, what was he lifting? Oh, our bed. Your bed? Why was he lifting that? I told him to so I could see if my glasses were underneath. But I only told him to lift the bed, not pull his back. It's his own fault. He doesn't bend his knees. I could see this conversation could go on for a while. And so I said, but he's all right apart from that. Even though dad made a full recovery from his stroke a few years ago, I still worry that could happen again. Oh, yes, he's fine. Just making a big fuss about nothing. I have an ingrown toenail, but you don't hear me complaining, do you? No, I keep my pain to myself. I'm not like some people who are always after sympathy. I didn't point out that the chiropodist said she didn't have an ingrown toenail. I was still hoping to watch some of Holby City. So, Mum, why did you call? Aren't I allowed to call my own daughter these days? Yes, of course, Mum. I just mean, was there a particular reason? There was silence on the other end of the line. Mum, you okay? 
Oh, yes, yes, I'm fine. Don't trust me now, I'm thinking. Ah, oh, yes, that's it. I saw the vicar today. Wonderful news, Alison. The vicar has agreed to marry you. Well, that's kind of him, Mum, but I don't think we've met. And anyway, I'm an engaged woman. Mum sighed deeply. I've told you before about being facetious, Alison. It's not becoming. You know quite well what I mean. <laughs> yes, Mum, I'm sorry. But we're... Before I could finish, my mother interrupted. He doesn't really approve of marrying divorcees, but I explained that it wasn't entirely your fault, and he said that, as I was such a faithful member of the Ladies' Guild, he was sure he could make an exception. First of all, Mother, it wasn't my fault at all that Brian left me for a bimbo. I could hear my mother sniff on the other end of the phone. And secondly, as I was trying to say before you interrupted me, David and I aren't getting married in church. What do you mean, not getting married in church? You're not going to get all... Excuse me. <laughs> what do you mean, not getting married in church? You're not going to go all hippie on us, are you? Your father's, father's too old to go off to Sun Beach at sunset. No, it's going to be a quiet affair in a registry office with just close family and friends. You're not pregnant, are you? I'm 57, Mother. Well, these days they can do anything with a test tube and a turkey baster. So that's the first extract. I'm sorry about the phone ringing in the middle and the postman coming and everything else that's <laughs> going wrong at the moment. OK, so Alison and her, her first husband have two children, Adam and Chloe. Um, Adam is is home from the ho home from the university for uh, holidays over Christmas and he'd phoned his mum the night before to say he was staying the night at Joe's. It wasn't until some time, until some time later that Alison realised she didn't know of a friend called Joe. She hadn't heard of a friend amongst Adam's crowd and she didn't even know whether it was Joe was a boy or a girl, a potential girlfriend. Um, so in this extract, sorry, I keep hearing little noises. In this extract, um, Lady is the dog and Chloe is Alison's daughter. I can find it. What do you think, Lady? I asked as I patted her before taking off my coat. He said he was going out with the lads. So maybe Joe's one of those. One of those, Chloe said from the kitchen where she and David were preparing vegetables. Really, Mum, you shouldn't use terminology like that. It's very insensitive. She put down the peeler. I think I've got a book upstairs that explains the damage you can do by speaking carelessly like that. I'll see if I can find it. So saying, she disappeared out of the kitchen. I felt as if I'd walked into an unmarked minefield. What? What? Why do my children keep saying things and then vanishing? David laughed. He put down his knife and gave me a cuddle. I mean, what did I say to warrant that outburst? I felt close to tears. I'm not usually tearful, but I don't cope well with disturbed sleep. I think she thought you were referring to someone as one of those, David said. What do you mean, one of those? Gay, homosexual. Why? What did I say? I wasn't, by the way. I think you said something like, maybe he's one of those. I thought back to what I'd been saying to Lady as I walked into the kitchen. Oh no, I meant maybe Joe's one of the lads Adam is going for a drink with. David laughed again. I see. A thought occurred to me. Why? Is Joe gay? Not as far as I know, but then again, I don't know who we're talking about. I was rapidly losing track of this conversation. Perhaps I had better try and read what not to say and why you really shouldn't. The paperback Chloe thrust into my hand. The world is indeed a prospective minefield for those of us who are so often misunderstood. I don't know if you ever have that problem where you say things and you mean it quite innocently, <laughs> but you're misunderstood. 
OK, so the next extract, um, we're looking at Adam again. Um, he's due to go back to university the following day. His dad's picking him up to take him and he'd given his mum a pile of washing to do, ready for the next day. So he's come in now, it's, it's the evening of the day before. Anyway, more important things, Mum. Did you get my washing done? Oh, yes, Adam. It's probably still in the machine. You mean it's not dry? Oh, Mum, I need my clothes to take back to uni tomorrow, and Dad's picking me up first thing in the morning. OK, OK, I'll put it in the dishwasher now. I stood up and became aware that they were all looking at me. What? Why are you putting Adam's clothes in the dishwasher, Mum? Oh, you know what I mean, the thing out there that dries clothes. The fridge, Adam suggested. I gave him a dirty look. You wait till you're old. Actually, Mum, Celia was telling me about a wonderful book she's read, Chloe said. It's really helping her to deal with the change. By going grey, smelling of weed and wearing long hippie skirts, you mean? Celia is one of the mentors of the Women's Refuge. She's become something of an icon to my easily led daughter. Chloe chose to ignore my comment. I know you're going through a difficult time of life, she said, but I still love you. And I will get this book for you. I know you will find it helpful once you read it. Mum, I said, how do you know what weed smells like? OK, and now you might be able to hear George, the dog, licking his drink in the background. He's just come in and he's very thirsty because he's just been for a lovely walk. So he's making quite a noise. Anyway, um, we'll jump on a bit further into the book. Uh, it turns out that the reason for Adam's overnight stay at Joe's who is a boy, by the way, uh, it involves computer hacking and the police get involved. Alison has to explain this to her parents and brother and sister, her brother and sister-in-law, over afternoon tea, during which Alison gets a little confused and something is mentioned that puzzles her. So going home in the car, she decides to ask David about it. On the way home in the car, we were both quiet and until David said, Do you think that was wise? I looked at him. Which bit in particular? Changing Joe's sex and turning, it, turning him into Adam's girlfriend? Oh, that bit. Probably not. I sighed deeply. You see, this is why I should never go out or speak to anyone or have any human contact whatsoever. Mm. <laughs> It'll all come out in the wash. Have you seen my washing? All the adverts lie. There isn't one powder that actually removes stains. Not the sort of stains my family seem to suck in. I sighed again and David patted my hand. Then I remembered something. David, I said, what exactly is the dark web? There's only one thing you need to know about the dark web, and that is, you don't need to know about it. Oh, go on, tell me. No, that's what I mean. You don't need to know about it. I sensed this could turn into one of our conversations, the sort that has potential to last for a very long time without getting anywhere. I stopped talking. While David was in the bath, he likes to laze there with a gin and tonic, I googled dark web. The first result on the list was a video entitled, Why You Should Never Access the Dark Web. I started to watch it, but suddenly thought it wouldn't look good if the police searched my computer and closed it down midway. Then I panicked in case I had alerted some sort of IT police who were always scanning the waves of possible terrorist action. I ran upstairs and burst into the bathroom where David was lying back, eyes closed, covered in bubbles. I may have done something stupid. David didn't even, didn't, sorry, David didn't even open his eyes, he just grunted. You remember what we were talking about in the car? Hmm, he grunted again. I might have 
accidentally clicked on the dark web. He opened one eye. Accidentally? Accidentally? That's the word you want to pick up on in that sentence? What if all the waves are being monitored? Will I be arrested? David opened both eyes and sat up. What waves? I gestured vaguely into the air above my head. You know, where all the computer stuff goes. What exactly did you click on? A video. David raised his eyebrows. A video about why you should never access the dark web. So you didn't actually try to get on the dark web? No, I just wanted to know what it was. There you are then, no problem. It was all right for him to say that. He wasn't the one who had a son facing charges of hacking. He wasn't the one who would be accused of bad parenting. Or even leading by example if they found out I'd been anywhere near the dark web. My mother would be blackballed from the golf club. I'd never hear the end of it. David suggested I should pour myself a gin and tonic and watch Call the Midwife. It was a good suggestion. By the time two babies had been born, one mother had died and another had left her abusive husband. I was counting my blessings. So, will Adam be sent to prison? Will Alison? Will her mother be blackballed from the golf club? And will this be the year that Alison and David actually get married? Will Alison have a male stripper at her hen night? Will she make it to the right church on time? All these questions and many more will be answered in this year, maybe. Maybe. So I hope you've enjoyed these short extracts. Um, my book is available in uh, e as an ebook or in paperback format uh, from Amazon. And as I said before, I'll, I'll be pointing here when I said before, I'll put all the links on the uh, in the comments at the bottom. Um, and again, if you, if you didn't hear me because I hadn't recorded it properly, um, <laughs> there. Um, if you go to my website, you can sign up to my newsletter and get a free download of this time next year if you want to read that first, excuse me. So um, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye, I think. Anything else I'm supposed to say? <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye.